Well, I'd like to welcome you to this Meet the Trainer Google Hangout. And I know you're going to so enjoy the people on this Hangout. I do. <laughs> In <laughs> fact, if we have half as much fun on the Hangout together as they and I have been hanging, ha having in the last little while, we're going to have a great time. It's been so much. It's just been a joy both to feel their spirits and be aware of their intelligence and insights. And you're going to get a dose of both of those today. So I'd like to welcome Eve Wotier Freiman, who is the head of the Center for Brief Therapy in Brussels. And Eve has been a pioneer in bringing energy therapies to Europe. He has been training therapists and coaches in French-speaking countries for many years. And he's also developed all kinds of structured, detailed approaches to treating various mental health conditions, even really difficult ones. And I have been so impressed as I've trained with Eve and for Eve in Europe at the advances Eve and his center have brought to mental health, and especially applying applying energy therapies to mental health. Eve also, even his trainers there and his therapists also have a long history, a long track record of conventional psychotherapies as well. So they're grounded in those therapies, but then they bring these advanced energy therapies into that mix. And the uh, combination is really powerful as you'll start to discover in this interview. So I am so thrilled to welcome you Eve and see you in person, even though you're a long way away. <laughs> Hello, Dyson. I'm very happy to be with you and with David, too. So thank you. <laughs> thank you for your invitation. We'll have a lot of fun together. And, and then my friend David Feinstein. David is the co-author with his wife, Donna Eden, of several books and the sole author as well of some. And he is a, uh, I, I'm going to just call you one of the most brilliant people I know. And he has the ability to translate the, these somewhat esoteric concepts of energy psychology into the kind of language that conventional practitioners, conventional doctors, people in the biomedical world can understand, can resonate with. And so he has this remarkable ability to translate these kinds of practices that seem so mysterious and strange sometimes to the conventional medical world into terms that make sense and resonate with them. So David has been my collaborator in a series of papers that have really sought to explain these therapies in terms that the conventional medical world can understand. And David, it is just a joy to see your smiling face as well. Thank you, Dawson. It's a pleasure to be here with both of you. And um, I, I guess that my job is to kick off with, with a question. And uh, one thing that I think um, can give some encouragement and other energy psychology methods is that John Bowlby came up with the idea of attachment and attachment disorders way back into the in the 1940s and um, and it was not accepted it was it was ridiculed by many of his colleagues for a long time and then and by now it's one of the most important foundational ideas in therapy both for working with relationships as well as working for a whole range of psychological conditions, some of which are very difficult. And if you don't understand the attachment dynamics, it becomes very difficult to know how to proceed, whether you're using EFT or any other method. And if you have um, really given a lot of thought to what attachment disorders are and how they work with um, with clients and how they can be used with EFT. So why don't we start off with you just talking about what we mean by an attachment disorder. Okay. Yes, thank, thank you, David. Yes, it's John Bowlby. John Bowlby is the pioneer. But uh, a lot of people uh, negate his, uh, his work. But uh, in my job, in my work, uh, I just realized that effectively for some people, the need of to be uh, safe, in a safety place, was so important. And the link, the relationship between the, this kind of people and the others was so fragile 
that we need to take care of it before to try to use and to care to help anything else. So um, for me, attachment disorder, it's a, a massive insecurity and safety during the childhood, the, the, at the very beginning of the childhood. If your parents uh, were, were not there, or there is a, a grief, uh, uh, or there is some uh, um, violence in the family or something like this, there is a, a capacity of the, for the man, for the people, for the child, just to sur survive to survive to the to the fact to the situation and the the people the child will try to survive to create a new link a new interpretation of the link the relationship with their parents of the uh, the environment and there is three different way the first one if it is it is the detached at, detached attachment so i would like to go to my father to my mother but i know that probably um, i will not be uh, received very well so a part of me think oh i want to go to them and to kiss them but another part said no so i just keep a, a poker face no emotion because the emotion is very dangerous and inside it creates a, uh, a behavior after that during our all during all our life uh, another one it's the just the way it's uh, the abandonment reaction so we are so there is so anxiety uh, if the people the beloved one left or is not with me or is not uh, take me some insurance enough that is create a lot of anxiety. So this kind of people, uh, by example, will send a lot of uh, short message, 10, 20, 30, 50 during the day. So I love you. Do you love me? <laughs> Can, uh, because they they need this uh, this link, and it's so uh, yes, it's so anxious. And there is also a mix between the the, the both of them. So some people try to create um, the insurance and said, okay, do you love me? Send a message and sometimes it just detach. Oh no, I'm not sure that it's safe enough so I will not go to the other people. So it's very complicated because if you have a story, a life story with other traumatic events, it's complicated, it's, it's create a complexification of the treatment because you we cannot uh, access to the people, to the trauma, by the same way that a, a simple trauma. Simple trauma is very easy to to treat. Uh, you you take the past, the, the more the more worst souvenir, and after that you just can tap on it if it is EFT. <laughs> but it, when it, it is a complex trauma and complex trauma with attachment disorder, we, we cannot do like this because. If we try to go directly to the past, it's very dangerous because the the personality it's not strong enough to um, to take some to take some resource to take some uh, force, and we can really uh, open totally the 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 wounds of the people, and uh, it's we, we can re traumatize the people. So it's very important just to know the first question is. Okay, it is, is it simple or complex trauma? And after that, there is attachment disorder more, that's just the complex trauma or not. And with that, we can just use some protocol, some way to use it to, to work on the people. Very good. Now, part, so part of what the clinician needs to do is to really discern whether beyond the trauma, there is an attachment disorder. Yes. And how do you recognize that long ago in this person's history they had developed strategies of clinging or strategies of withdrawing? That yes. the, how do you recognize that during your session? 
the, the first clue is the, the story during the childhood. Is the parents, the, the parents were too, too strong, too, um, yes, too hard with, with the child? Uh, there is some uh, presence or not. The, the father or the mother was there or not there because it's creating automatically uh, an anxiety for, for the child. Uh, there is, uh, in some family, we cannot show the, the, the feelings, the emotion. Uh, I remember one, one case, uh, I, I worked with them uh, a few months ago. The, the people explained to me that during all the childhood, the parents didn't like the, the child, didn't like uh, her, and just said to the child, you, 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 you cannot show your emotion, no love, no smile, no tears, nothing. If you imagine to, to be like in this kind of situation during 15 or 18 years, the people cannot, uh, cannot contact her own emotion, recognize them, uh, take them uh, a signification. So the first thing is just to recognize the people, do the connection with the people, with the emotion, and uh, give to the people the possibility to translate the uh, emotion with the feeling in the body, the body sensation too because there is no connection between the body and the emotion. It's totally cut. It's, it's like a dissociation. It's a, it's a way mm -hmm. of a dissociation. And uh, after that, if we recognize that during the childhood the safety place was not there, we know that we had to, before to, to do something else, we had to create a very strong link, a very um, uh, therapeutic alliance, very strong therapeutic alliance, because the first thing is just to show to the people, to the client, that we can, he can't work with them, with with us. He can work uh, in a confidence place, with safe, with 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 safe safety, just because the people do do uh, don't know that, and after that we can perhaps begin to show our own self place. So it's between, it's uh, through the presence, through the compassion, through the empathy, that we can just uh, open the door of the, the therapeutic alliance and, uh, and give them more strength to be able to begin to work on the presence. So we will search after that the trigger of the presence. But Never, never, never so, in the past. Let me interrupt there. Yeah. Because this is, I think these are very important elements, and I just want to get a sense of the order by which you um, pursue them. So, someone comes to you with a trauma. They're not coming to you to talk about their past. They're coming because of a recent trauma, or they get triggered by a trauma that wasn't so recent. And You, you, you know that rather than to treat the trauma, the first thing you want to do is... Is that, is that kind of the next step as, as you're developing your therapeutic alliance, that you're, you're kind of looking at the... So it's, it's cutting a little bit. So, um, so for me, during the first session, the, the anamnesia, I will take the story of the people, but I won't. I won't enter in the in the event uh, themselves. I just I just take a trauma map map map, and after that, I just observe if it is complex or not. If it is complex, there is attachment disorder or not. And after that, I know that I can go to the past directly or not. If I can go to the past, I know there is, with my trauma map, I know there is some event that I had, to, um, I had to manage later, but I will begin by the present. Search the triggers of the present to be able to, uh, to take the measure of the, the, 
the building, the construction of the people, the inner construction. There is enough resource or not? Uh, because if I try directly to the past, it, there is no inner resource. It's like uh, I put dynamite <laughs> in the people and perhaps the Pandora box will explode. <laughs> so, so, so it's not a good idea. <laughs> so, so I will begin by my presence, my therapeutic alliance, to just bring the people to enough self-confidence and confidence with me during the, the, the job, the work. And after that, I, I can use my own self by uh, use some sentences like, uh, I totally agree, I totally understand what you, what you lived. And it's totally normal that you can be touched and you be sad uh, with that. And I totally, I, I am totally with you during this, uh, during this job, this work, just to be with you and support you. At the rhythm, that is the more, uh, the more um, uh, soft for you, or the most, the most equilibrium for you. And after that, we can just uh, see the trigger, the, the event in the, in the present with the trigger, and we can just begin to tap on it and observe what happens. There is some uh, unconscious uh, belief, there is negative beliefs that appears, and we can just uh, work on, on them. And after that, we just begin to try to see if there is some positive belief that we can install and, uh, and uh, strength, strength there. But the first thing, it's observe, simple or complex, and after that, my alliance, my link with my client, the safe for the client, and after that, the, pres the trigger of the presence. So yes, it's a, it's a construction. Sometimes it, it, it could be, uh, it could take some time. Sometimes it could uh, be uh, fast, because if the people have a good link with you, you can accelerate the process. And you can also accelerate the process uh, using a continuing taping, like in uh, provocative energy therapy, like Steve Wells and David Lake. So you can just manage the, the people, even when he's uh, telling his own story, just by continuing taping, just to maintain the people, to keep the people in a comfort zone, in a I, I call that the, the, work, the work window, because we avoid like this the dissociation or the abreaction. So we can just uh, stay in this comfort window to be able to do the job after, after the targeting. I'm just going to jump in here for a moment, and uh, before David, you go on, I just want to mention to those of you listening live that you can submit questions in your little Google chat window. We'll see them, and I can ask those of even David. So by all means, go ahead if you are able to open that, open that Google chat window, type your questions in there, I'll see them, and then I'll reload, relay those to even David. But per perhaps I can say that I, I send you uh, the, the article in English too. I send it you the article with all of this. If, if, if the people need to, to read it, it's possible. I, I listen to you, David. <laughs> we lost you there for a second, David, but I think you're back now. Okay. Yeah, what I was saying is I hope the audience out there is having a better reception experience than I've been having. I'm unfortunately missing about a third of Eve's words. So I'm having to be kind of psychic in <laughs> <laughs> It well, is the link. We, we say sometimes, don't project your stuff out there. Don't think it's them. It's really, it's really you. 
And uh, David, I've got to tell you, I, 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 it's you. <laughs> We'll see you loud and clear. <laughs> but but David, it's it's a it's a it's a way to be linked together. So I'm so happy to be linked with you <laughs> as a psychic too. <laughs> for all the psychics in the audience, they're getting all of this loud and clear and ten dimensions beyond that as well. <laughs> it's <laughs> Multidimensional <laughs> EFT. <laughs> Coming soon to a therapy office near you. Multidimensional EFT. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's it's not so funny because uh, with the people that uh, lived a near death experience. I did some kind of work, <laughs> so it's it's we, we can use EFT <laughs> in this kind of work because with near death experience there is uh, often a, a spiritual way, so it it is important to just to work on it too. So why not? We can try it. <laughs> right. <laughs> um. Now I've lost all contact, and I don't know if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. So actually, this is very good that I'm having this difficulty because it lets me be much more precise in kind of making sure that I understand the protocol that you're laying out. So what I what I've understood so far is that you begin. Um, recognize that, then you have a choice of whether to begin to tap on the triggers to the trauma or whether you feel like it's appropriate to go backwards in time to their, um, to their childhood and to identify whether there are attachment disorders. And, and you, I, you, you kind of spelled out what you look for in terms of their memory of the parents, etc. So, yes. am, am I with you so far? Yes. We, yes. We technically, during the first session, we we uh, we will find, we will observe if the people had a childhood very safe or not. If it mm -hmm. is not, it is not a good idea to go to the past. So we just take the map of the trauma, of the event, of the situation with the father, the mother, the, uh, the family, and all the other stuff to be able to treat them after that. But we will begin by the present, because just see how the people manage is present. So what is, what is his daily uh, activation or his daily um, situation? Because with that, we can observe if there is some resource or not. There is some positive thing or not. There is some pillar, positive pillars in, the, in their life or not. And when we can see that, we can begin to desensitize the trigger of the present by EFT, like traditional EFT, classic EFT. And after that, we will just do a pendulation. A pendulation, it's like... A, we will we will uh, find a positive pillar, and the positive pillar had to be the the exact opposite of the negative belief. So the the negative cognition, the negative belief, like I've no uh, uh, no I've, I, I've no value, I've no value, and it is I value. Okay, so we can just try to do that, and we will has to the people, there is some uh, event that uh, show you that you have value, some people say that for you or about you, or you can say that about you, yes, if it is yes, we, we tap on the positive with this positive event to reinforce the positive, to bring him to the maximum, and after that 
we just go back to the to the trigger with the negative belief, and we just observe if the set the set scale decrease or not. If the set scale move move go uh, move down, we just take um, again the tapping on the negative to continue to desensitize. If never change, we try we we do a a, a reframe about the negative. And the reframing is for me, it's reframed in five different points. It's very important because uh, the five points, uh, it's even though I have this, I have its problem, I deeply and completely accept and love myself. So it's the traditional beginning. First is, even though I have this problem. Second sentence is, I deeply and uh, profoundly accept and love myself. The first sentence is, is the recognition of the problem. It is normal, it is true that I'm sad, that I was bitten, that I was, uh, I, I, I'm f I felt uh, without any value. Because the recognition of the part, the, the hurted part, is very important in trauma. And for the attachment disorder too. The fourth sentence is, is uh, uh, a truth, another way, another truth, it's here and now. I'm just a little bit older than during my childhood or during this uh, event. And I just, I just uh, learned something, something true, preferably related with the problem. And the, fi the fifth sentence is something to opening. So it, I'm just open to the possibility to just uh, manage this kind of stuff differently. But it's open, it's not closed, because we have just let the unconscious try and find the right way to do that. If I'm, if I'm uh, too, too much precise, too much uh, accurate, it, will, it could uh, create um, a friction, an opposition between parts the negative and the positive. So it's just open to the possibility. So this kind of uh, reframe is very important in this uh, it's complex trauma and with attachment disorder because we recognized and we will recognize the, the, the hurted part and after that we just put something true about the people the, 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 the brain cannot think together in the true way, in the false way, in the wrong and the right way. So if just put in the right way now, and just after that I'm open to the possibility to do something else, automatically the brain will try to do something right. Because the just the, the thing just before was right, was true. So it's a very a very well, very uh, uh, concerned, very effic efficient opening to the possibility to live the thing differently. And all the time I saw a lot of very big and deep, deep change for the people. And after that we just desensitize the negative, we, we, we continue to desensitize the negative and we will back to the positive belief, the positive event, to just observe if it's the resource is all, um, it's always, it's still strong enough. And it's like a pen, pendule, pendulation, it's like a clock. You know? And we will do that, this kind of work, just till the set is zero. So it's one way to work on that. It's the way if it is works. <laughs> if it doesn't work, there is another way. <laughs> And the other way is? <laughs> the other way is, if it doesn't work, it means that the self, the self-connection, so the connection, the people, the inner self-connection, it's not strong enough, it's not uh, cleaned enough. So what is the self? The self, it's normally the, um, the space, the inner space that everybody has at, at uh, at the beginning of the first, uh, the first sparks of life, every people have this 
inner space. It's the self. It's the self. It's uh, just a peace space. It's a compassionate, automatic, compassionate space, without any intention, without any attempt. Though there is no waiting. It's just a state. It's just a state. And if the pe if the resource does do don't work, we had to connect the people before to this kind of stuff. It's why we have a lot uh, a lot of problems sometimes. We 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 do some work. It it seems that it works, and after that the problem the issue come back. It's because the resource don't uh, don't hold don't hold because there is no enough connection with our own inner peace space, the self. So there is some other model. There is a IFS, IFS internal family system, it's ego state therapy. There is a lot of tools like that or uh, uh, com uh, compassion focused therapy. It's a uh, other model, modalities that, uh, that uh, allows to contact the self by vis visualization or mindfulness or, or even if you like the, the trees uh, I, I did a very beautiful walk in the trees, in the red trees with Dawson a, a few years ago, uh, with the big red trees. If you like the trees and that it uh, authorizes you to connect with your inner peace, it could be enough to con connect with the self. And after that, we just try to show this space to the parts, the activated, activated parts. So it's like a, a parts dialogue. We can do that also with TAT, Tapas Acupressure Technique, by example. But to, with EFT, it's very easy to do that because we just talk with the parts and we try to, uh, to use our own self as a ter therapist to contact their own self. So we ask question. First question is, okay, when you feel this uh, uh, sad part in you, where is where uh, is its place in you? It's in you. It's around you. Where is it is? And what happens for him? I'm very curious to know him, to know him, to to know them very, uh, very well, or, or better. What happens? And after that, we just put a question to the people, to the client. Say, and you, what do you feel about this part? And at one moment, there is, at the beginning, it could be probably other parts that appear. The parts that uh, is anger, the part that is uh, fear, in the fear, the part in the joy, the part it's boring by all these parts, the part that, that uh, needs to manage everything, and so, and so on. But at one time, at one time, the, it's, it, will, it won't be the part anymore, it, won't, it will be the self and the self will say something like this without any intention it's just I feel a lot of love for this part and I feel a lot of a lot of uh, understanding uh, comprehension uh, com compassion for this part and that this is the link the beginning of the link and after that I, as a therapist I just say okay could you just stay in connection with this space and see what happens and automatically, with, with continuing taping, we'll see the people uh, become more peace and peace and, and, and more and more peace, 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 peace. And we continue just to do the tapping. If we uh, observe some uh, feeling, we can uh, accelerate the process, uh, um, um, stimulating the right meridian because, uh, by example, the liver for the hunger, like or something like this. So, like this, I take the liver in EFT, or uh, if it is uh, uh, a sensation of rage, uh, I take the, the gallbladder like this. Uh, anxiety, I take the the, uh, the spleen like this, and so and so on. So we can accelerate the process, but the 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 very uh, important um, pillar is just to connect to the self. And we, we can also propose to the people, to the client, to do some exercise between the session, like vis visualization with uh, um, heartmates, uh, art, co uh, art coherence, uh, and visualization with compassion and something like this. Because this space is just a, a really, really, really peace space in 
in our, um, in you, <laughs> in me, in all of us. Uh, there is some very interesting uh, experiences about that do, uh, did by uh, Wachmaker uh, and uh, Thomas Zello about the, the, the spontane spontaneous empathy of the children. If you if you Google uh, Wachmaker and Thomas Zello, we'll see that with uh, chi child children and uh, apes too. It's very interesting because it's totally uh, spontaneous, spontaneous. So yes. That's the other way to do. <laughs> it's the way that I proposed. <laughs> yeah, I um, again tossing them and um, a little more than half of what is being said. So I'm a little bit at a loss of what to do. Um, I I think I think I. I think it's you, you've one one thing I'm not clear about still is when you reframe and reframe those five yes that you spoke about um, are are you reframing I, I only heard two of them I heard the first one and the fourth one okay um, but are you um, so it seemed like that was going to the past you were you were reframing things from the past but I. I wasn't sure how you got to the past. Yes. No, we, we, we don't go to the past. a lot of attachment disorder. Well, I didn't think so. That, that was what confused me. OK. So the, the, when we reframe, we reframe on the trigger. But we reframe with five, uh, fifth different uh, points. The first one and the second one is like EFT. Even though blah, blah, blah. And uh, I'm deeply and completely accept and love myself. But the third one, the third one, it's the recognition of the the hurt of the of the wounds of the hurt parts. So the the angry parts of the sad parts, something like this. Okay. But the parts of the trigger, so w the feeling of the trigger. Okay. And the fourth one is. You hear me or not? No, I can't. Couldn't hear you. Okay. Um, David, David, let me just jump in here. What we'll do, because of the, the sound problem, is we're going to keep on going, but at the same time, we're going to have our tech team here jump onto our teleseminar line and set us all up with a teleseminar audio. That'll work perfectly. So we'll keep the video feed as it is, but in the next two minutes, we'll email you a, um, a phone number to call. So go ahead and stay on, stay on the Hangout, but also on your cell phone, just telephone in to this, um, this, this phone line. That way the audio will all become clear. Did you get that? Yes, I, I heard that. Thank you. Um, so do I, do I wait for her to call me, or do I call the phone no number that comes on the line? If you are, um, are you, can you get an email right now? Yes. Okay. Can you eat? Can you receive an email right now? Okay. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a what's called instant teleseminar, and the wonderful psychic people here in the office with me. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I try hard to look at you and not look at them, um, they, they, they are springing into action and said, "Yeah, that that, that call for us." And so they're going to email all three of us in a moment with, with that call. And also just want to observe, if you're in the audience as well, as well as the, the com impromptu comedy you're witnessing right now, um, you can also type in questions on the Google Q&A app. So type in your questions there, and we'll go ahead and relay, the, relay those to Eve and David as well while we're setting these up. Let me just ask a couple that have come in too. Oh, and also, once we're on the, the teleseminar line, there'll be a second um, <clears throat> Q&A capacity there, which we can, so, so we, we, can, we can exchange little messages there as well. Mm -hmm. If you're watching, go ahead and use the Google Q&A app, and we'll, um, we'll review your questions. So two, two so far, um, and this is for you, Eve. What if, what if there is no positive material in there? 
So you were saying to link the um, the um, the current negative thing with some kind of positive resource. But what if there just is nothing there? You just can't find anything. You're you're the therapist, you're the coach, you're in the session, and you're just drawing a big blank when you try and do that. What do you what do you do then? That's the first question. There is a lot of different way. It, it it will depend of the story of the people, but. Uh, um, by example, uh, when I was in Haiti uh, last June with Jean-Michel Guret, we did a session uh, with a very, very uh, sad uh, uh, mother. The mother was uh, four children, and uh, there is a, a very, uh, very difficult uh, health disease. Um, no hope because she, she lived in a in a box in a box. Uh, on the, on, on, yes, and she had to choose to give the 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 medication to herself to to cure herself or to her uh, children or to buy something to to feed uh, uh, her children. So it was very difficult to organize that, and uh, the only hope was the the the, the face in God. So the only reframe it was okay. Even though I didn't understand what what's the purpose of God. I'm, I'm, uh, and I'm totally lost with this this thing, and I'm totally uh, sad. Uh, the truth is that it's the the big event was two years ago, and uh, I bring my children to the school. I bring, and my children are, are are alive, and I'm alive, and I'm just open to the possibility that something could change with the help of God. So it's it's a kind of reframe, but because there is no hope except but God. So um, another way is just to construct, to build together. If you want, if you want something positive, how could we do that? How could you do that? If you want to not to be sad anymore, what do you want to feel? And we will build together this feeling because it's another way to do. And if it's totally impossible to do that, we had to work on the self. It's just the self. So show by the therapeutic alliance. Oh, do you? F oh, the therapist feel the link with the client. It's like humanist uh, Ro uh, Carl Rogers approach or something like this. We just feel the the link, the um, the empathy, the comp compassion, and after that, we just ask the people. How do you feel when you hear that? Could you, could you, uh, can you hear that? And how do you feel with that? And at one moment, there is something that changed. The people said, "I'm feeling something in peace in me." Or I feel, I feel some more. Yes. And we just said to the people, "Okay, just continue to be in connection with that, and just observe it. It's continue to." Decrease, it's stop, it's a it's a step, or it's increase in, uh, again. So and we continue to tap during this time. So we we uh, create an anchorage with the positive, and we desensitize the negative. If nothing happens, we we will do that again. So I will just okay, talk talk me, just think to the negative. Or do you feel? What do you feel in your body? Where is the feeling, the sensation? Okay, what is the feeling? Okay, and I just say to you, I just uh, explain to you that uh, I could totally understand that because it's very hard to live what you lived during your childhood. And we do uh, a reframe with the five, the the five points. And after that, I just ask, okay, what do you feel during this this? What happened? What happens? And again, we try to connect with the self, and we use our own self if we had to do that. But so it may take you a while. It may take you several attempts then to yes. be able to. Okay. And sometimes it could be take some time because uh, it's it. Sometimes it's one, two, three sessions. Sometimes a lot of time because we need to create first the the therapeutic alliance. And after that, our self could use, uh, could uh, could match, could uh, function for the, the other. But 
you we we must have to the to the mind that it is temporarily it it it's not create another uh, uh, I, I don't know the name in English we we, we don't create uh, uh, um, we, we don't create a, a positive stuff from our own stuff as a therapist it's very important that the autonomy of the people it's uh, it's the first thing to obtain so we don't need we don't need that it is our own self that begin that uh, become sorry become the self of the the client it just temporarily okay? yes yeah, yeah no, i think i think Eve, what we found the same thing in our trainings here too that it is so vital that the therapist not step in there with their own problem solving, their own cognitions, their own language, their own concepts. Yes. Even though it takes some patience, it's essential that those um, shifts emerge from within the client and are not imposed by the therapist. Yes, yes, totally, totally, totally agree. Okay, yeah. so you should both have now got an email giving you a line to phone in on. I'm calling in on that line right now. And Oh, you, you you call me on my Skype or something like this? Actually, you need to phone in on this other line. Okay. Uh, you you just got Okay. An email will... about this now. Okay. I will check. Oops. And my phone, let's. All right. Josh, are you on the line? Okay, David, I, I think you're on now. Okay. Can you hear so, me? Yes, I can hear you very clear. Great, then just go ahead and turn off your computer mic. Okay. 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 And I call that. So. Welcome to the conference. Please enter the conference ID, followed by the Thank you. Cast ID accepted. For help with guest options, press star zero. You will now be connected with the conference. Okay. 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 You can now hear each other, vote each okay. other. So I can I can hang out now. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's just double check the hold of the set. Yep. Can you hear us? Yes, yes, I c I hear you. <laughs> Beep. Okay, now everyone should be able to hear us. Uh, Kaya, as on the Google Hangout, can you hear hear me now? Great. How about David and Eve? Yeah, 
better than it did before. Good, super. We're going to go ahead and uh, adjust your audio levels as well and raise them as high as possible, but at least now we'll have good sound and uh, we will have our beautiful smiling faces as well. <laughs> good. Well, thanks for, if you're in the audience, thanks for hanging in there with us as we, as we work this out. So, um, he was just answering the question about that we got about what happens if there's no positive there. He was talking earlier in the program about how you find some positive material in the past to take that the, to the, 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 the present or the, or the remembered traumatic memory tube. And he was saying that you just keep on going, that eventually you find something positive that the, the client can connect to, but it might take a few attempts. But he was also emphasizing the, the real importance of staying there with the client's experience and not superimposing your own. But if it does take several sessions, several attempts to find the positive material there, wait till it's authentically material from the client and don't try and um, insert your own happy thoughts it's in there. It's very important to don't be in the, in the projection. Yes. So, because we, we, we hold and we hold our own stuff. So it's very important just to be in link with the client. Not, don't begin to suppose something, but just say, okay, what is the internal system of the people? What is this internal belief system? And how to manage this belief system to uh, accelerate the process of healing? But it, it, uh, when, for me, the, the most important thing is before to understand the belief system, is just to be in presence. Use the compassion, your, your own inner peace state, just to be able to, to stay linked with the, the client. And I think it's one of the reasons that the, the psychic <laughs> of David, uh, uh, the psychic, the psychic is just the, the intuition. The intuition begins very important at once, but we have to, uh, to, to check if the feeling, if the intuition is true or not, because sometimes it's just projection. Even though, and uh, often, more we have experienced it, more <laughs> we have to be uh, to be careful because uh, the experience could become uh, an, um, uh, a break, a break to the intuition because we said, "Oh yes, it's that." No, no, we we, we never know, we never know, never. So it's just okay. What is the, the system, the family system, what is the belief system, what is the attachment or not, the complex or not, and after that, how to manage uh, for the best uh, for the client. So it's the ecology of the client first. Yes. That, yeah. Yes. And even if you have intuition, I know in our trainings, we always say, check them out with the client because you can be right sometimes and sometimes you can be spectacularly and embarrassingly wrong. <laughs> yes, yes. So, so personally, when I'm not sure, I just say, or not, or it could be da da da, or perhaps not. And I, uh, during and I'm taping, I just say that. So I just put a little sentence about the possibility it's not true. So we let, so I can follow my feeling without. Uh, we just push the people to the client on my way. So it's very, very interesting to do. It's, um, it's a friend of us. It's uh, Bill Hanlon. Bill Hanlon do that with uh, hypnosis, with uh, uh, oriented solution hypnosis. It's uh, blah, 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 or perhaps not. <laughs> so maybe it could be that, or perhaps not. It, it's mm. a way to, to work in the top of mm. the Just to keep the... the, the, the the walk window, the comfort window. Yes, to where the client can either validate what you're saying or say, no, it's not that at all. Yes. David, are you still able to hear us there? Yes. Great. Um, yes, this is very helpful. So, um, so really, as you talk about intuition and the ways that you are um, you know, kind of, kind of staying very tuned into the client and um, checking out whether or not your intuitions are correct. 
they're, they're, they're really big up the whole question of the relationship and how much, like in EFT, the relationship sometimes is not given as much attention as in psychodynamic therapies, which is a lot of attention to transference and countertransference. And, um, and, and yet, you know, as you describe, it sounds like you are forming a very intimate relationship with the client. Um, could you could say a little bit more about how you view the therapeutic relationship, or what you've been calling therapeutic alliance? I totally agree with you. Huh? I think for me, the, the transfer and counter, counter transfer uh, uh, stuff is very important. So if, for me, the, the therapist has to follow a therapist. If the people, if the therapist don't do a, a therapy for himself, it doesn't work because it will be uh, it will be activated a lot by the, the client stuff. So uh, yes. So for me, the relation is also it's just the, the the connection, just to be able to stay just uh, for listening to people, not interpret what it is, but just listen, receive, and by the heart, by the heart connection, by the compassion and the empathy, just testify what what uh, the black and after that. We can just also use the refrain to open to another possibility and to desensitize with the tapping and to open to show something other gate that the client will uh, take or not. But it's the client path, it's the client way, it's not our way. But it is important that the therapist uh, uh, follow uh, her own therapy because. Uh, if he, he, he didn't, he didn't be able to. Uh, no, 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 he won't. He won't be able to recognize the, the transfer or the counter transfer stuff. So it's not good. <laughs> yeah, yes. So for me, it's very important in the, the relation with the client and the therapist to be uh, in a psychology way and with uh, uh, ethics. Ethical, ethical uh, cognition and recognition. <laughs> so, so we do that. So, okay, so that's you my personal me. space, that's your personal space. But we can use our self. A self is not personal space. The self is just the connection through the compassion, the empathy, to testify to the client what he lives. After that, to be uh, to correct, um, authorize him to uh, to uh, I don't know the name. Uh, again, all say yeah. In we lose also. I know. I'm here. Go ahead, David. Yeah, yeah. When, when, um, I'm wondering how you use EFT, how you use tapping, uh, or if you use it, when there is, um, when, when there's conflict that comes up between you and the client, either, you know, like the client perceives you as criticize them, whether you have or not. Um, I, I think that there's, there's an opportunity to use tapping to kind of um, shift that that feeling to the trigger of whatever you did that triggered them. But there's also a danger of um, of, of not um, respecting the client's feeling when you go to just try and tap it away. Do you, do you ever enter that territory, or do you kind of keep away from using tapping in that kind of situation? I'm, I'm not sure to understand. What, what, what is the what is the what is the question? Yes, just it, if 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 with a client a, a transference issue comes, say the client feels he have just okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, so when, when when some kind of stuff appears like that, if it is from the client, I just explain to the client 
what happened. But when uh, doing the, the work, I'm uh, personally, I feel stepping on myself always. Because it is a way to just keep my own uh, self and my own uh, work uh, window. But I just explained to the client, it, it is a, a normal a normal reaction to the, to the, uh, to the relation uh, and between the therapist and the client. And if it's my own stuff, sometimes I could just say to the people, okay, I just observed that I could uh, be activated by uh, a, a part of your stuff, uh, it, it belongs to me, it's not about you, and if uh, I, I will go to do a supervision, uh, take the supervision session and the therapeutic session to, to clean that before to, to be able to continue with my client, or if it's possible for me because it's too strong, I just explain that to the client and I could uh, refer the client to a, a, another therapist uh, because I won't be able, uh, I would, I would not be able to, to follow the client correctly. So for me, it's very important to uh, to have the conscious of this kind of stuff and to take the responsibility to take care of them and to follow a therapy or take some supervision and some something like this. Um, if if the client doesn't understand that. I just take the time to, to explain that and I could just continue mm -hmm. to take my own job on myself after the session just to correct, clean the session, clean the, the stuff there and see what happens. But uh, for me it's very important to be aware of the transfer, encounter transfer and to take care of them. It's, uh, yes. Yeah, sure. So, so you really you put a lot of attention to keeping yourself a clear channel and you are able to use capping to help to support that intention yeah. and so that that's you know that they're very conscious of the potential for counter transference for projecting your own self yeah. onto the situation if the client is transferring a lot onto you now the client is seeing you as um, uh, hostile and um, detached and not understanding them, uh, which which in psychodynamic therapy often happens, and that's that's a, that's a very juicy part of the therapy. Do you um, do you kind of reflect back to them as you said, or do you ever use tapping to to try to shift their their feelings about you. I think there's some, so, some so dilemmas. Me, there is different way to, to do that. So you, I, I don't know if you if you know, but uh, I, I did uh, provocative energy therapy certification. So it's a, it's a way to have this kind of uh, reaction very easy if we are not in the heart uh, in the in the present. So for me, when this kind of stuff appears, um, I just I can I can I can just uh, uh, say um, my apologize to the client. I just explain to the client and continue to say to say on, on this during session. I just said, oh, sorry. And if I hurt you, I'm very sorry because it's not the purpose. Uh, the purpose is just perhaps to create a new game, to conscious, to perhaps try something to uh, provoke a reaction. And, 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 and something like this. So if I hurt you, I'm, I'm deeply and totally sorry <laughs> because it's not it's not uh, voluntary. Uh, it is not uh, a way to walk. But perhaps it's also a part of you. I don't know, or perhaps a part of me. I don't know. But I would just for my for my side, I will explore that because it's my responsibility to know if it's, it's a part of me or not. And I will take some uh, take care of that without with the supervision. But uh, if it's a part of you, just take uh, take a look on what happens for you inside you, and just uh, just continue to tap and see together if it is uh, a reaction to some of my uh, purpose, if it is uh, a, a really uh, a mistake from my side, or perhaps a misunderstood. Between us, 
and we just explore that, and we continue to tap mm -hmm. and to work on, the, uh, on it. Um, it. It's very rare for me. It's very rare uh, that kind of stuff out there because with the provocative style, the people know <laughs> that we provoke, and we explain. We we explain uh, at the beginning that there is provocation, but the provocation is always, it's always and still from the heart. So it's just a way to follow the energy, to see where the energy is and where it could be uh, the block. It could be uh, yes, it could be the block to just take care of the block. So um, it's very rare that happens like that, and, 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 and that we have a client very outside, uh, very drunk. If the client uh, cannot go to the past, to the, this kind of uh, path, we just take care of them, and we could also work on the block itself, not on the reaction, but the block, so the, the difference mechanism. So if the people react very um, violently, it's fine. It's a fight reaction, fight by three, it's a fight reaction. So we just explained, I could explain to the client, okay, it's a fight reaction. Perhaps I said something wrong, perhaps I said something very dangerous for you, I don't know. But we can just explore the, that together and see what happens. And we continue to tap and we take and we try to connect with the power activated, urge it, to take care of it, of them. And uh, think uh, and find the solution. Yeah. So I'm very impressed with how much you you stay in contact with the clients unfolding experience moment by moment, and I'm sure that's what hits off that extreme transference reaction that you hit it off the past by um, being so attuned to what happens moment by moment. But if it does happen, then it sounds like you first attend to your alliance with the client. You, you say, I'm sorry that that happened, and I don't know if it was in me or in you, but, um, and then, and only after really establishing all of that, you begin to ask questions that, that cause the client to inquire whether it might have been something that they projected into the situation. Yes, yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Good, good. Okay, well, that's, that's that's really helpful. Um, I think that you know, because I think that a lot of people that learn EFT are not trained in the um, the kind of more psychodynamic interviewing approaches and um, transference and counter transference are somewhat um, foreign ideas to them. And so I, I really love the way that you stated that because I think that was very instructive for um, for for many therapists. Let, let's let's go to a different um, question, which is that there, supposing that this person who has had a simple or complex trauma is someone that your intuition tells you that it would be useful to go to the past, and you can you sense an attachment disorder that is there, but as you kind of about their family and um, have them tell you about um, what what went on, and you're looking for their, to see how the relationship with their parents um, were helpful or 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 really caused major problems, and ask them to go back, and they're just not going back. It was just not. Not having any memory. Um, what what do you do? Do you feel like it's important to to um, find those memories? And if so, how do you help them to to approach those memories? Okay, there is different way uh, again. <laughs> so, um, no, so, no form, no easy form. Uh -huh. So yes, but. Uh, if it, if it is okay to go to the past, so if we treat, if we resolve uh, all the trigger of the present, and that we, uh, so we we can be, we can begin to go to the past. If the people said, okay, I have a big problem with my family issue, but.
but I don't remember because uh, the defense mechanism is amnesia, and uh, so I don't remember all my uh, childhood or some part of my childhood. So it's true, it's, uh, it's clue, the basic evidence, because amnesia is a very strong mechanism. But we can, if we You just make sure your uh, phone is all the way up against near your mouth because if it's far away, then we can't hear you too well. So make sure it's all the way. Uh, no, cl closer. Make sure make sure it's closer to your mouth. Okay, thank you. That's that's better. Yeah, yeah. It's a little bit too far away. That's 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 better. Good, good. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. It's one or the other. Either you can hear me or we can hear you. <laughs> No, that, no. We 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 got the picture that if 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 they have a memory, it can be a body. You can use a body feeling. You can use an image. You can use other kinds of ways of accessing the trauma besides the memory. Is that is that true? Is that right? Yes. So if, if we do it in the memory of the trauma, we can use uh, a symbolic way. We can ask to the people to represent the the amnesia. By uh, a symbol or by a draft, or something, uh, not a draft, sorry. <laughs> a draw. Uh, uh, yes, by an, an item, an object, something. Okay. okay? Yeah. We ask to the people to, to uh, color the object, the item, by some qualification, like it, it is moist, uh, it is uh, hot, or, uh, warm, or uh, it is uh, gray or yellow, something like this. The, the same way that we treat um, pain with EFT. Yes. And uh, when we just tap on this qualification of this, um, yes, on, on all of this stuff, and we can uh, access to the memory like that, or access um, on this, um, below the memory, below the amnesia like that. But we don't need to have the direct access to the memory. We don't need that. It's just a gate to take to desensitize. So if the people say, oh, yes, it's like a big balloon with a, with a gray link and a yellow, we could just take 
the big balloon, the big balloon, the grey, the yellow, the big balloon, the big balloon, and you use the feeling and the body sensation uh, that are there too. Because if the people say, said, I have a memory, but I don't remember what is it, there is, uh, there is something that's uh, blurring him. So we can just ask, okay, what's blurring you in your body? What happens in your body when you think to be part of your life that you don't remember anymore? What happens in your body? And we use and we use that and tap on that. Yes. Yes. And you use any of those things if there's no memory. So using um, some image, using body feeling, using a visualization, um, and then keep on following that as that shifts. And usually, if the if the uh, if the visualized image changes, like it goes from being uh, the size of a beach ball to being the size of a basketball, being the size of a tennis ball that means something is shifting. Or if it changes from being purple to being yellow, that means something is shifting. We don't know, as the coach or the therapist, we have no idea what that, that means objectively, but the, the change described by the client means that something about that traumatic sensation is shifting. Now, I want, David, I want to just jump in here with one, another question for you that came through, came in. That was the whole question when you're talking about transference and countertransference earlier on. Eve, I understand that um, you have some protocols in which you actually deliberately have the client project onto the therapist. And I heard you talking a couple of years ago about how when you're, working, when you're working with borderline personality disorder, which is very hard to treat normally, you literally have you, you actually have the client project onto the therapist in the office sessions, and then you work that way. Is that a correct understanding? Sorry, I, the, the last word, I, I didn't hear the last word. So just before correct understanding, just before. Okay, so is it true that when you're working in your protocol for borderline personality disorder, that you actually encourage the client to project onto the therapist during the office sessions? So, if I went on the phone, um, yes, I, I ask the people to say everything happens. So, if the, there is some uh, hallucination, uh, like uh, auditory hallucination, uh, or uh, perhaps uh, uh, visually, visually hallucination, something like this, I just recognize the problem. If, if, um, if the, the, the first origin of the refrain in five points. Because I just realized with this kind of people, if I didn't uh, recognize the truth for them, that the voice said, you are bad for me, you need me something wrong, if I did, didn't recognize that, I blocked the process. Because the part, the part that that uh, he said that he's very anxious. He's very anxious to be assaulted by me as therapist or as people. So when I will just recognize that, I open the door to give some other opportunity to to try. So I just said, okay, even though I totally, I'm totally scared by my therapy. It's totally, uh, and I'm totally afraid. Uh, So, so the need of that part to be recognized by the therapist is a proxy for the need that part had when the person was a child to be recognized by the caregiver or the parent. Yes, it's the same. It's the same. So the safety, the safety, the therapeutic alliance, and if a part of the client is afraid of the therapist, 
it's normal. If I just if I deny that, I don't I don't create therapeutic aliens. I broke the therapeutic aliens and I uh, yes I put some obstacles <laughs> in my link with the client. So if I just recognize that, I have to begin to do something differently. Yes. And I don't precise what to do and how to do because the client will choose. And when it it, uh, it will be uh, ready, it just said, oh yes, I think something better in my body or in my mind, the voice uh, uh, freezing, crease or something like this. And I, I did that a lot of time with, uh, also with uh, um, schizophrenia people and something like this. So it's very, very, it's very, very useful to, to use that. Hmm. And that then opens up new possibilities in the client's mind when, or po yeah, when that's been done. Very interesting. Hmm. And some some of my trainees uh, that uh, work with schizophrenia people, uh, a lot of this kind of job with a lot of success. So, so it it uh, it doesn't uh, it doesn't heal the schizophrenia, uh, of course. But it authorizes the people to keep uh, more easily the, the comfort window. So they can stop uh, um, even uh, one. I have a, a testifier of the client. The client sent me an email and said to me, uh, it was a client of uh, 25 years old, and uh, she said, it was the first time during the session I, I felt the beginning of a crisis with a lot of anxiety and uh, normally uh, I just fly away of your office and I just run with with a and we just use this kind of kind of refrain and we stop the, the beginning of the crisis just work on self confidence the confidence and, and so on so that she sent me an email and said, it was the first time you it, it hmm. changed my life because now with the, the, the tapping, when I know that I can just simulate the point, I can just recognize what is happened because it's just part of me too. And after that, I can open another part of me is very aware that it's just a part of me. I'm not necessarily identified with all this stuff. Yes. Yeah. And on the last hangout, but trainer, hangout, we, we had a trainer. A full system, but it's a way to try. Just try yes. And see what happens. It, on the last hangout, we had a trainer who works with uh, homeless, mentally ill people, and um, she was saying that a lot of them, a lot of her clients are schizophrenics, and she was saying there's no like miracle cure, but what she's found is that it lowers their, their anxiety level about the possibility of the next schizophrenic episode, and when their anxiety is lower, they tend to be much more peaceful about their condition, and they really express gratitude and, and notice a difference when that happens. So uh, it's lowering the, the, the anxiety that is the real benefit, the real perceived client benefit for the schizophrenic. For, for me, for me the, the, the client range of O, we can just we can just also to the people to uh, to be more automatic. So they can just uh, uh, learn to take care of themselves to continue the something like this uh, to continue that too, but also to be able to stay longer and more longer in the comfort. The comfort zone. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Makes sense.
very harmful approach to uh, to using capping with uh, people who ranging from you know simple trauma to complex trauma to complex trauma and attachment disorders to um, borderline personality to schizophrenia and I wonder if you could use just the last couple minutes that we have to talk about how you train therapists to be effective in uh, in working with this, this range of, of people in the in the sensitive ways that, that you laid out. Which which, which, which kind of people? But how do you, how do you train people to do the kind of therapy that you've been describing today? And you keep keep your uh, phone close to your mouth, like make sure your phone's close close to your mouth. Not not too close. I don't understand. I was just asking you if you would talk about how you train therapists to do the kind of work that you've been describing to us today. Oh, okay, <laughs> sorry. Okay. Um, we. We, we create eight years ago. We create a, a French-speaking uh, association. It's uh, APEC, and normally we we will uh, begin. Uh, we will uh, become uh, the chapter of the ASEP uh, for the French people. We I have to some different people to be around the table and to create clinical approach of uh, energy psychology. A tool like EFT, but also uh, uh, Remap and also other tools. So we begin to to train the people with this kind of uh, uh, take care of about the, the clinical approach. So the first question is also how to recognize simple and complex trauma, how to recognize the the attachment disorder or the um, borderline or the schizophrenia or something. So what what is the the clues, what, what are the clues to recognize that? And after that, there is some question. So the question is also to, uh, to visit some pillars. And pillars is automatically the past, the present, future, but also the cognition, so the, the, the belief, the family of belief, but not, um, not um, still uh, past, present, and future. Because if you are on complex trauma, we have to work with present, and after that, uh, slowly to the past, and after that, only to the future. So there is a really protocol, we create protocol, and I achieve a clinical EFT book uh, in French. Normally, uh, Dalton will translate it, <laughs> I hope, <laughs> for EFT Universe. But we, we put some protocol, and we uh, we learn a lot of, also uh, from uh, some people uh, from EMDR with uh, 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 Katyoshi or uh, yes, people like Katyoshi and something like this, because uh, they work a lot on the, the in utero uh, stuff of the pre-verbal, pre-verbal, uh, stuff. So we just adapt this kind of stuff to in EP to energy psychology. Okay. Uh, there is not create a gate that uh, uh, already exists. It's interesting to see how to manage the, the different modalities and models to the EP because the EP is very tough. Uh, I, I like to go uh, and to clean, to clean some strong stuff, but very with a lot of uh, substance that don't authorize always. Sometimes it's very difficult, but it's very really uh, close from EP2. So it's uh, also we. We can learn a lot from EMDR, but we can learn a lot from the clinical approaches. And for me, it was perhaps the only regret. It was during the EP training at the beginning when I learned and my beginning EP. There was no clinical approaches. 
if we have not the training before, there is no clinical approach. So we create, for the French speaking, and I hope for the English speaking too, <laughs> we create uh, some uh, uh, modules with the clinical aspect included in the training, like EFT or uh, Remap and something like this. You have to promise that, Eve. Promise, promise. You have to swear to me you will do this. <laughs> Cross your heart. <laughs> yeah, I've been trying to extract, Dave, I've been trying to extract these from Eve for the last five or six years. It's like, I want these modules, I want this information. And you know, the, the, thing, the thing I think that David would, would agree with too, Eve, is that you've so, um, you made such a good point here, is that there are these really effective techniques and insights from other therapies and many people in energy psychology think that energy psychology is the um, the be all and end all the the ultimate th kind of therapy because it is so effective it's so effective very very quickly and you see these r rapid effects but when you're dealing with difficult cases even difficult experiences and parts of yourself that there are some parts that are not easily accessible not easily um, treatable with energy psychology and so being wise enough to recognize that other therapeutic approaches have a huge amount to offer us and if you learn them you have to have the best of all worlds is a much more mature approach than being a champion for any one therapy and saying oh this therapy this can this is the, the panacea that can fix everything I want I want to stop to smoke. I want to stop to drink. I want to stop to eat a lot. And uh, a lot of people believe that if they work on the beginning of the problem, so perhaps the event or perhaps just the the, the issue, it, it will it will be great. It, it will be okay. Yes, it, it's not just the, the, the people working. Yes, I don't drink anymore, but I begin to smoke or begin to eat a lot. I don't realize that it's not the, the, the issue that the client brings, it's not a problem, it's just a symptom. It's a symptom of something else. And if we work on the symptom, uh, we just display the symptoms will be, uh, will be uh, replaced by an, another one. Or the problem will come back, and 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 if we don't know that, we just tap on it like that. But it's not clinical. <laughs> it's just okay. I learned that I had to tap on it. Or on what is it? But it's not true. With addiction, it's certainly not true. With uh, OCD, it's not true. On the phobia, it's not true. A lot of phobia, OCD, or um, uh, addiction is related with other thing and it's just a way to dissociate of a pain, to dissociate of a even of something that creates pain and something. So if we don't know that we we work on the dissociation but not on the on the origin of the problem. Yeah. We don't solve the problem. And it's why. So during the training we'll we teach a lot of this kind of stuff to authorize the people to recognize what is the true problem. The, the roof of the problem and not just what is it uh, in, in front of that point of view. It's just not the people's brain, but what is, what is the, the roof? Yes. Well, that, that problem gets them into therapy, which is a good start, and then you work on the real problem. Eve, I'm so grateful for you for being on the line with us and sharing with us today, and we'll go ahead and post those, those documents on EFP Universe with a link from this trainer hangout and also from a couple of other places within the site. So um, even though our sound quality was imperfect and didn't quite uh, work as well as we'd hoped, um, I think that if we also have those those documents from you, we can post them up there and people can access them that, that way. And David, I am so grateful to you for, for being here and 
um, bringing your huge powers of observation to the discussion. And I wonder if you'd like to just say a few words to wrap up and um, perhaps summarize some of the insights that we might have gained during the course of the last hour and a half. So well, thank you, Dawson. It's been a pleasure, and you've, um, you've, I think you've really, uh, in, in this brief period of time, shown the subtleties and the nuances that uh, therapists need to be attuned to to be effective in working with difficult clients or people that have been severely traumatized, combined with attachment disorders, combined with um, um, borderline, and um, I think. I think that the, um, you know, the, the, some of the concepts that you named are really important for people to get, that you distinguish between simple and complex trauma, that you look at how the attachment history interfaces with that, and that you look at um, whether or not it is responsible to delve into the past with, with some with some. Situations that's exactly what you want to do. In other situations, it's um, uh, almost abusive to do to do so, at, at least until you've established the um, conditions that, that allow you to move into that territory. So I think that it's been a very. Um, I, I guess one of the things that I thought was one of the real take-home lessons was listening to how closely you. David, we lost you there for the last couple of seconds, and I'll take it as a sign that um, <laughs> that, that we should wrap up. But again, I want to just thank everyone for being on the call. For those of you watching, we will again post this on the Trainer Hangout page on EFP Universe for future access. And um, as you can see, there is a huge amount for us to learn from people like E, from people like David. And as we keep on sharing these ideas, as we keep on, um, as we keep on sharing these ideas with each other and bouncing off each other, as we keep on interacting, there's a, such a rich treasure trove of information about how to work with even these really difficult mental health conditions. I, I really feel at, at now that we are like those pioneers that a century ago were learning how to eradicate diseases like typhoid and polio and diphtheria. There were people who were just determined to do this. They were intrigued by how these worked. Uh, they were determined to figure out the puzzles that they saw before them about how these diseases were transmitted and how they could be how they could be cured. And um, that, that curiosity those interactions and that determination to see these implemented resulted in a huge shift in public awareness and public health in a very short amount of time. I feel that now with energy therapies, we are at the same point with mental health. We have suddenly, at the last part of the 20th century, the start of the 21st century, we've got these tools, we've got these therapies that are just uh, disruptive. They're just, they're just discontinuous change agents in our ability to work with mental health problems. And um, this series and this exchange of ideas is one way we accelerate the implementation of those kinds of really powerful, powerful possibilities for relieving human suffering. Again, some human suffering is just going to be with us forever, uh, and we can't do much about it. But some things we really can do, do a lot about. And some problems like PTSD, like phobias, like anxiety and depression, that we had very imperfect tools for a half century ago or a century ago, we now have much, much better tools for. And we're determined to see these things make their, these, these tools, these approaches make their way into primary care, into conventional medical care, into reimbursable medical care. And uh, these discussions are one way we do that. So again, thank you all for listening. Thank you so much, David and Eve for being on the line, and this is part of an ongoing dialogue which has a huge potential to unlock new frontiers of healing for many people. So I'm very, very grateful to both of you for your absolutely central contributions to the field and making this happen. And I feel really blessed to know you both as dear friends. Thank you again. Thank you, Dawson. Bye-bye. <laughs>